Hey guys and girls, welcome to episode 13 of Just Wandering Oz. In this video, we start our adventures in Robe on the beautiful limestone coast. We sample some of Robe's delicious local coffee, beer and gin, and a drive following Robe's scenic trail takes us to the Robe Obelisk with some pretty specky views. We also go four wheel driving in Little Dip Conservation Park where we find some fairy friends and gorgeous beaches. We then head to the World Heritage listed Narracourt Caves, which preserve the most complete fossil records spanning several ice ages, the arrival of humans in the area, and the extinction of Australia's iconic megafauna roughly 60,000 years ago. We are at Lake Albert Caravan Park, just for the night, just to stop over on the way to Mount Gambia. Nice and pretty. There's a kids' playground, amenities, camp kitchen, all that jazzy jazz. Yeah, it's pretty cool. This is like pretty solid. I had to clean it. We'll just dust all the dirt and stuff off it so little Missy could cruise around, but she's having a ball. Hey, Blake! You're having a ball, aren't ya? <laughs> Someone is enjoying being free and being able to cruise around after a couple of very wet days. Ta! <laughs> Ta! Ta! <laughs> Ta! Come on! Yeah, go girl! Woohoo! She's off and running. They've just quietened down, but that was the biggest flock of cockatoos, corellas, galahs, whatever the hell they were. They were so loud, it sounded like a freight train. Oh, I wish I got the camera on earlier. We are now in Robe. Yeah, made it yeah. to Robe. Spent the night in the Discovery Parks in Robe last night. It's one of the nicer Discovery Parks that we've been in. The amenities are really, really good. That the playground? Oh, Ooh. the playground. All right. Blake's going on the flying fox. Ready? Go! Woo! So not sure. <laughs> she loved watching me do it. <laughs> I don't know what these are rated to, but that was so much fun. Check out this playground, guys. This is rad. The coolest playground I've ever seen. Look at it. this as a kid. Who am I kidding? I love this as an adult. <laughs> Is that better, Bubba? Is that more your, your pace? What are you doing, Bubba? This is going to be great on camera. <laughs> Leaving something for the big kid. <laughs> if I was a kid, I am a big kid, but if I was a kid, I would just spend every day, all day, right there. You work climbing it, so. I, I did climb it. 
nice. They have a family care room with like a full size bath. So if you want to give your bubs a bath, then you can. Yeah, which is awesome. like it's a cool, it's very like inclusive, I guess, because it's all for like people with disabilities or whatever. Yeah. There's like wheelchair. Wheelchair stuff. showers, wheelchair and I'm assuming toilet. that's what the like the bath is also there for. Is if you're a carer or something and need to, yeah, look after either a disabled child or somebody you're caring yeah. for, then you can. Which I think is amazing. Like mm. as a special needs teacher, it's kind of always something I have in the back of my mind. I think I don't, it's just I live I live with it. It's my life. Um, and whenever I see something that is disability friendly, it just makes me so happy. We stopped in at the info yeah. center Another, yesterday. Yeah, the other thing we're starting oh, to see more of. Yeah, we started the info center yesterday and they have disability beach wheelchairs. And this thing had like the biggest wheels on it, like fully off road. It was so cool. And there's full beach access for people with disabilities using this wheelchair. I just think it's the coolest thing ever. Yes. <laughs> Today's adventure is Little Dip National Park, if I could ever find it, because as I don't, <laughs> I don't know whether you're aware, South Australians, but you do not put signs up anywhere. <laughs> if you don't have Google Maps or you don't know where you're going, like just good luck to you. But even speed signs. Oh, like, yeah. you'll be on a stretch of road. Half the time I don't know what the speed limit is. There's, or there's no speed Just lines. making an educated guess. This feels like it should be 80 or 100. Uh, it's it's funny. It's something that's infuriated Laurie since he got him. I mean, he grew up in South Australia and he's only just noticed it. Yeah. <laughs> For instance, I turned down this road and it said Little Dip Conservation or Little Dip National Park and Nora Karina. That was it. Then the road went to a T intersection with no signs. You just guess, I guess. <laughs> Which way do you reckon it is? <laughs> and I picked wrong. Fun story. So, I left some food in the car. Just nothing nothing crazy, just like a, a little bag of chocolate and some crackers. And I went to get them out, like they were cheese crackers. And I went to get them out and I had, it's like a, like a whoop. Sorry guys, <laughs> somebody's dog just ran out from their yard in front of the car. Oh my lord, that was so close to our car. Yeah, I thought that was oh, a dead dog. Oh, I just had a heart attack. Um, well, on a positive note, we didn't, <laughs> we didn't hit the dog. Alright, let's try that story again. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I completely lost my train of thought now. So they were in just like a woven bag and I went to pull the bag out and I noticed that the woven bag had been eaten through. And then I looked at the crackers and the cracker bag had been eaten through. It was just seen in one of those plastic Ziploc bags. And then I had a look in the back of the car and there's mouse poo. Great, we picked up a mouse. <laughs> we dodged the mice all through New South Wales. We picked one up in South Australia. <laughs> yeah, somewhere in South Australia. Oh my God. So, pulled up at Discovery Parks yesterday. Laurie went and had a nap with Blake, I pulled the car apart. We put rat sack down, sorry, to try and get it. And it had eaten through the rat sack. And so I pulled the car apart trying to find it and we found it in the spare wheel well. And then it disappeared. <laughs> so we're like, awesome, we know it's still in here and we don't want it to die in here. So we went to Foodland and bought a mousetrap, four mousetraps, the two packs of two. Oh, dairy. Closed. Why is it closed? <gasps> Bought four mouse traps. <laughs> this is like, this is not a small story. Well, it should be, but it's not now. Um, yeah, so we had to go to Foodland, buy four mouse traps in that time. Like, fell asleep, so we went for a drive. That was kind of <laughs> where I was going with that. Tangent. <laughs> We're off. <laughs> Got back, put the mouse traps in the car. It was literally five minutes. Yeah. And we caught it. So, peanut butter for the win. <laughs> That's my story. <laughs> I may just leave all of that in for you. Yeah, it's where it gets fun. Oh. For, we'll just go to 18 to start with. Um, if it gets, it allows me to drop it anymore, but it has been raining and I don't think we'll have seen much traffic out here, so 
Hopefully the tracks are pretty good. Who knows? We'll keep you posted. It's cold. I think I jump back. Isn't this your like favourite part of all driving? Oh, I love it. Great. We do have those four flat fly deflators. Tire deflators, but you don't know how to use. Yeah, the Storm ones, I don't know how to use, they just go to like 16, and I don't want it that low yet. Why don't you readjust them? Oh, I don't know how to adjust them. <laughs> so you don't know how to use them. <laughs> yeah, you screw them on, they let your tyres down. Yeah, guys, I don't know how familiar you are with the Jeep. We got Trailhawk, or Grand Cherokee Trailhawk. So we get all the selectable terrains and the um, air ride suspension. So for sand, all I'm going to do is select sand mode and go up one height which is approximately two inches of lift. Sand mode won't actually lift you, but I know some of these tracks are they're pretty whoopy. So, yeah. Pretty whoopy, is that legit terminology? <laughs> yeah, like when you're on a motocross track and you hit the whoops, it's very whoopy. So there's also this really cool off-road terrain app, which comes standard in, I don't know if it comes standard in the normal Jeeps, but it comes standard in the Trailhawk. Um, and it can go, it goes through all the different You can see there, aspects of the car. angle of the front wheels. Um, live, you can see suspension, live, I'll show you a little bit, we'll start driving, and it'll, you'll see it move up and down as the angles of CVs change and the suspension flexes. I'm trying to hold it as steady as I can. And yeah, you can, you can see that, you get your pitch and roll, so it's like your old school gauges, you're getting old Land Cruisers and old other vehicles. We showed you that the other day when we were going up one of the one of the hills. Hills. You got your accessory gauges, which is it's probably the one we use the most to yeah. check the trans temp and everything when, when we're towing, especially on the beach and stuff like that. When you're towing off road, obviously you want to keep an eye on your trans temp. Yeah, it just helps you out. And then you've got just your select train, select terrain, which tells you what terrain you selected and um, yeah, basically your coordinates and what your attitude is. Yeah. Don't use that one very often, but hey, it's there if we ever need it. Good to know. Just quietly. Oh, look at the size of that. That's huge. That's a big cuttlefish. Yeah, blue bottles. Check that out. You can see that there. Don't touch them, right? Nah, touch it anyway. A little bit of a blue bottle. Stingy, stingy. So we just had a giant male deer run out in front of the car. Of course we weren't filming. And now there's this gorgeous wombat. Oh my god, he's so cute.
stopped in at the local um oh you'll see we went to the brewery really nice yeah, really friendly really cool. cool little like place just in a shed yeah would be a really cool place they do live music on a friday night and they have open mic nights and stuff yeah it would be a really cool place to just go and chill out for a night where are we uh rogue town brewery it's pretty cool just in a little shed I already like it because you don't have to pay for the pool. <laughs> and they have 19 beers plus gin and wines. Local wines. Local, local gins. wines. Local yeah. gins. <laughs> local beers. <laughs> so we'll see how we go. I might try all 19. And Riz might be driving home. Maybe. It's pretty cool. It's a little family run one apparently. It's a really cool bar. It's very eclectic. Friday nights apparently they have live music. <laughs> Robe Town Pale Ale. Where is your daughter gone? <laughs> Behind the chair. <laughs> Bonnie Owl. Longboard Lager. Wolverine. And? Robe Gin and Mango. Yum. Everyone is taking it upon themselves to rearrange the furniture. What are you doing? That's the other thing we did while we were staying in Rome. We went to the Narracourt Caves. We did go to the um, Narracourt Caves, the so, fossil, fossil Caves. Yeah, we could have done that from Mount Gambia or from Rome. It's about it's halfway between. today my love caving <laughs> extreme caving extreme caving yes that's very close it is very close <laughs> we're at the Narragort caves yes um, so they're fossil caves so they're world heritage listed like I read before um, and we are doing the Victoria fossil cave which is a guided tour and then there is a self tour, which is the tomato stick cave. And then I like tomatoes. <laughs> and then there's a fossil centre. So yeah, be cool. Right. So we just arrived at the Victoria Fossil Cave. Tour. So it's about a 1k drive from the main infra centre. So make sure you leave yourself enough time. You good, babe? Yep. Just to put 
put a bit of perspective on the cave and why so many fossils at Narracourt. The ocean would have been behind that building where you, you waited for me. Uh, a million years ago, you would have still seen the sea. So 15 to 20 million years, it was coming in, falling back, coming in. The rock here is about 15. So I think still a lot, lot, lot younger than mm -hmm. Janolan is. So when the seas were high, the cave was full of fresh water, not seawater, it's full of the underground water. Um, the seas leave and that allows the water table to drop way below the cave and it formed a sort of cave so when animals fell in they didn't walk out. So our caves were pitfall traps. Um, so I guess pitfall traps are a bit selective. I don't know if you saw the big dog predator, the elephant-sized mega fauna. He's not going to get caught by the sort of solution pipes that trapped all the animals ahead. He's just going to get his legs stuck and then wander off. The giant goanna, the seven metre goanna, he's the wrong shape. He's yeah. not going to get caught. What will they move? It's terrifying. Meow. <laughs> Whoa. Hey, baby. What's in there? Is your daddy in there? This is ridiculous. What are you doing? You should have taken the camera. My mum. Yeah. Are you, st are you stuck? <laughs> oh. Is Daddy stuck? <laughs> Go over there, Fiona. Show me the way. Ooh. Clear. This tunnel's made for kids. Ah. <laughs> <Yeah>. Hello. <laughs> How bones accumulate in the caves. There are three main ways in which bones accumulate in the caves. Cave dwellers. Some animals use caves as shelters and roosting sites. When they die, their bones collect in the sediments on the cave floor. Pitfall traps. Cave entrances are often concealed by vegetation and act as pitfall traps for unwary animals like kangaroos and large extinct herbivores, such as Diprotodon and Zygomaturus, starving to death as their carcasses are soon buried in the cave sediments. Predators. Some predators, such as owls and the Tasmanian devil, use caves as roosts and dens, respectively, where they bring their victims to eat, leaving the bone scraps to accumulate on the cave floor. Tomato cave. Some big columns, hey. It's very cavernous, isn't it? We kind of did uh, like a bit of a the heritage drive yesterday. You'll see a little bit of it was. Of a scenic trail, yeah. Just checking whether we were meant to take that tunnel before. Should be right, as long as I'm heading east, which I am, we'll be right. We stopped in at Mahalia Coffee, which oh, is 
like a row born and bred like little coffee barista joint. So coffee good. on point. I think it's the best iced coffee I've ever had in my life. Well, obviously the weather wasn't real conducive to us doing a whole lot of we didn't get the drone up at all because it was rainy and windy. It's so windy. Yeah, and robes changed a bit since I was last here. Like we, you can't get to the obelisk and stuff anymore. You can walk out there, but there's all like barricades blocking it. And yeah, it's between the weather and like a few little things like that. It's still a beautiful little town, loved it, but just wasn't really what I remembered or maybe I built it up too much in my head. Yeah, and unfortunately we all got a little bit sick as well. So we, um, we didn't really do a whole heap of stuff because we kind of got to the afternoon and we were absolutely exhausted a little yeah. bug or something so yeah just picked up a little something something yeah that's fun <laughs> it is it's always fun and it's a real shame about the dairy we wanted to get to the um road dairy oh, what, we, we tried it three times to yeah. get there <laughs> yeah all right well we'll catch up with you guys in Mount Gambia yeah if anything cool happens on the way too or whatever we'll bring you along but yeah see you in Thank you,